Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever friends. you are, whatever you're doing. Hi, Shannon. Hi, how is, how's it going with you? I'm good, just back from holiday and I'm still trying to get my feet back into action because it was so long. We are here today to start a series of videos around identity governance and a really interesting end-to-end -end scenario that we found out through some of the program managers in our division. So without further ado, let's bring our special guest on. We are joined by Dan. Hi, Dan. How's it going? Hey, Good morning. Hey, very well, thank you. Hope everybody had a nice uh, Memorial Day. It was. It was, <laughs> it was good. Very, it's Good. Very nice. um, a, it's kind of a Monday here now, or Monday feeling. It is. Nice. It <laughs> is. Unfortunately, right? That's that's the un unfortunate reality of a three-day weekend. Your Tuesday becomes your Monday. <laughs> exactly. I'll be a short week, so it's going to be a fun sprint. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. So, so Dan. Tell us a little bit about your job at Microsoft so the folks that are watching sort of know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure, sure. So uh, my name is Dan Jornby. I'm an area solution architect working for Microsoft Consulting Services. So by the book, an area solution architect, primary job is services pre-sales. So when we have customers that are looking for assistance in implementing uh, Microsoft technologies, we're the first touch point in concert with the customer of which how we can help them figure out where Microsoft can help them. So in okay. other words, if a customer wants to implement identity governance, I'll be on the call first to kind of scope what they're looking to do. And then we'll come up with a statement of work and then we'll have consultants and architects help the customer implement the appropriate uh, technologies. Sure. Makes sense. Reminds me of my days of being a consultant. It's not for the faint of heart, but it's a, it's an awesome role to be in because you get to see sort of the end to end solutions that we don't always get to see and we kind of hear about. So I'm glad that we were all able to get together today to kind of talk about the scenario at hand. Sure. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, one other key point about an ASA is we also do delivery. Now, uh, okay. our proportion is, you know, 75% services sales and then 25% delivery. And what that helps us do is ensure that when we're helping a customer scope a project, we actually have hands-on experience. So we really know what it's like in the real world. Ah, nice. got it. I like that. I worked for an SI, a system integrator. I should be conscious. Not everybody knows all the acronyms at Microsoft, but they had a very similar role where it was kind of a solution architect role. They were pre-sales. However, they also had delivery hours and it yeah. helped them yeah. sort of stay in touch with the technology versus yeah. waving a wand and thinking that everything would just be magical and work. So <laughs> makes yeah. sense that we've got that at Microsoft. So I, I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. So I think let's start by describing the scenario, right? So I think it's a really interesting and a unique scenario. And I think if you want to take a couple of minutes here and, and walk us through, I guess, the problem statement, sort of how you came into the mix here, and then we can start digging into the architecture, the demo, the diagram, all of that, I think, will be a great sort of extra step to go into. Sure, sure, exactly. So um, on the ASA team, we have different architects that work in different areas. My primary job for the, uh, actually the 14 years I've been in Microsoft, is state, local government, and education. Okay. So I was working with a department, State Department of Medicaid, and they were rather new to the O365. So they did the classic, they had on-premise exchange, they had on-premise file servers, and they, they wanted to move to the cloud. So they did the classic migration from on-premise to the cloud. And then they started expanding the usage of the, of, of the cloud services. So they, okay. they purchased the entire, what we call the E5 suite. So they owned everything and they wanted to maximize their value of that. So one of the first areas that they wanted to help improve on was the ability to externally share resources, namely files and things of that nature, with other hospitals around the state. So as you can imagine, the state Medicaid department receives and sends out information to different hospitals and they needed to do that securely. So their current solution was a homegrown FTP site. And then they also had a third party solution called Citrix ShareFile. And so they came to me and said, okay, Dan, we've got all these really neat tools here. How can we maximize the value in our O365 investment to replace our on-premise FTP solution and our Citrix ShareFile solution. 
And right. so the, the core technology that we used was SharePoint in concert with uh, guest accounts, also known as B2B accounts, to allow the different hospitals to be able to send and receive files to the state Medicaid department. Interesting. I feel like that's a really unique situation. But then again, it, it, was it a scenario that you had ever seen before? Was it something that was brand new? Was it unique to that scenario specifically? Or Yeah, you know, when we think about the ability for the cloud to allow better collaboration between two, you know, business partners, you know, in this case, the, it was a state Medicaid department with the various hospitals, you know, the cloud makes that a, a, a lot easier. You know, if we think about the old days, well, okay, I would stand up an FTP site or a third party solution, and then the department head would come to IT and they'd say, oh, we have a business partner, please create them account, and then right. what's the password, and then you got to, you know, securely get the password to the customer, and then the customer forgets the password. So the cloud helped eliminate a lot of that tedious work and obviously made it a lot more secure. So I would say that the ability to share resources with, with different business partners, you know, it's been around for a long time, but by right. leveraging O365, it's going to get much more secure and then much easier for the admins. I was going to say that it probably made it a lot more easy because of the fact that they had a bunch of different systems and a bunch of different solutions sort of cobbled together to make that end-to-end -end scenario work. Whereas if you lean on Office 365, that end-to-end -end scenario is sort of built in, it's just a matter of hooking in what you need to. Exactly, exactly. Right. And then when you think about the, uh, the interaction between, you know, the Medicaid department and the various hospitals, so the hospital users are uploading files, and then let's just say that hospital person leaves the hospital and goes someplace else. Well, how does sure. Medicaid know that they need to disable that account? And so those were some of the problem areas that we helped eliminate by leveraging SharePoint, identity governance, some, some PowerShell scripting that we'll, we'll show later on today. Very cool. So I guess let's, let's start with the actual architecture that you worked with them to implement. Okay. So uh, again, so the premise here is, is we need the Department of Medicaid to be able to send and receive files. So the okay. primary technology that we're going to use or we're using in the solution was SharePoint. Now in the scenario, in the Medicaid scenario, we have different departments within Medicaid that share and receive files for different hospitals and units within the hospital. So the underlying architecture is this. So we have a single SharePoint site, and then within each SharePoint site, we have uh, share code one and then share code two. So if the billing and eligibility department in Medicaid needed to share files, they would have a folder. You can see here, as far as the permissions, the visitors youth group is removed. And then we created an, um, an Azure Active Directory security group to secure this particular folder for this particular Medicaid department. And then similarly, we had a different department in Medicaid um, in my example here, share code two, that okay. would be able to share files with you know, a different hospital. The idea being here is you have a single SharePoint site of which is sharing externally with business partners, but we can containerize that for each department within Medicaid itself. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So then let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's go into the permission so far. Cause I think that's a, a good slide. Sure. Sure. Walk so the, the, walk the flow. Yeah. So, the, so the, the customer thought, well, wow, this is, this is really easy because now I can have quote external SharePoint site. I can put each department within that site and then each department can share uniquely with its different business partners. So again, it's, it's important to keep in mind here that the customer was, was somewhat new to um, O365 and frankly, very new to SharePoint. So as being the consultant that I am, I came up with the steps here. So we came up with the admins. We're going to go ahead and create the SharePoint site for each department. We create subfolders for each business partner, right? So we have a SharePoint site. Share code one is the business partner, share code two. We create an AAD group. We then secure the group, each folder in SharePoint, 
and then we remove visitors, right? Because each folder needs to be secured to each okay. business partner. And then we leveraged users, uh, B2B accounts, also known as guest accounts. And we put those users in the group. That way, a singular security group secured each individual folder. And yeah, and when we look at this, boy, this is five steps. And, you know, the customer really liked the solution, but it's a little bit, you know, a little bit laborious. Right. Seems like a lot of steps. Yeah, exactly. And that, so that's where we came in and I came in with some of the automation to go ahead and help with that. But there was one other scenario that the customer was very concerned about. So if you remember, we talked about the fact that we have a business partner that has access to a SharePoint site. Yes. Now, how do I know if the business partner still needs access to it? This was very top of mind for the Medicaid uh, CISO because she was saying, look, we don't know when these people leave the hospital. So how do we know that they need to stop having access, right? Because we're dealing with PII information here, which can be sensitive. Right. And so looking at the customer and what they owned, this is where we got into identity governance. Okay. So if you look at the solution here, we start with a, a frankly, a very simple sharing scenario, a site, each department is secured and then some security permissions here. Well, what we did was, is we leveraged Azure Identity Governance Access Package to help automate granting and removing permissions from these SharePoint sites. Okay. So if you're not familiar with Access Packages, they're part of the Identity Governance feature within, within Azure, and they're very, very powerful. So, they are. So if we take a look here, we can see we have Department A. Now, this is the department within Medicaid. And then we have department, well, excuse me, department A and department B. Okay. Now, each of these catalogs here, you can see we're in identity governance and then in catalogs. A catalog, in a sense, is an, is an access boundary. In other okay. words, department A can have access packages within their catalog, and then only department A can manage them. Similarly, department B can have a catalog and they can only manage access packages within their catalog. Now, this was important from a workflow standpoint, because in the old days, a department would call up central IT and they would say, please create an account for the FTP site so this person can access it. Well, right. the IT department never said no. They would just create the account and then they would email the password and then the password would, would get handed off to the business partner. So if the IT department was never saying no, why even have the IT department in the loop? Yeah. By, <laughs> right. So by, so by using access package catalogs, we can now delegate external sharing to different departments. I like that. So... Yep. And so that eliminates the IT step there. Now, setting all this up, absolutely. There was governance meetings to say, this is what you can share. These are the policies. And we'll get into those a little bit uh, later. But this was the framework that we allowed a delegation for external sharing. Okay. Very now, cool. Yes. And as we move on again, an access packages contains different resources. So if we think, look back at, our, our security model here, you can see that we removed the visitors group. We have an AAD security group that is then securing this folder. So when we take a look at the access packages itself, each, each access package, in this case, share code two, has two resources. You get, if you're assigned to the access package, the first thing that it does is it makes you a member of a particular security group. The second thing it does is it makes you a visitor at the site level. And then finally, access packages allow you to control different times. So in other words, if I'm assigned an access package in this example, I will only have access for 45 days. Okay. If the 45 days is expires, I either, I can lose access, I have to re-request access. Um, we have, a, in a sense, a workflow to ensure that 
you know, somebody doesn't permanently have access when they should. So I think kind of to, to recap thus far, you were brought in to solve sort of a great scenario in the sense that they had a bunch of different systems wrapped together to make the sharing capacity with external users feasible. Mm -hmm. So you were brought in to sort of fuse life in with Office 365, and then you were able to get this up and functional with a handful of steps, you walked through everything with them. And I think, you know, this sets us up really well for going into the next phase of this, kind of showing us the actual demo.